Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I am Krish Mohan. Since we the consumer are as vain about food as we are about the one gray hair on your head, certain companies are attempting to reduce waste by using marketing. And sure, yes, marketing has the stench of vile consumerism, exploitation, and manipulation. But this might be the only time that manipulating human minds about imperfections has a noble cause. I would love to live in a world without being blasted by marketing and advertising all the time, but considering that's our reality, if there's a positive application to it, then why not use the tools in our tool belt? It would be great to be driving down the highway amongst the slew of porn stores and crosses if we saw signs that said, don't waste your food, it's okay to get smaller portions, no one will think less of you for having less food. Smaller plates mean bigger heart. Eat a whole banana for a more satisfying sex life and compost to make this world a better place for your partner. The UK grocer Tesco is selling this so-called ugly fruit in their stores. They call it the imperfectly perfect campaign and the wonky looking fruit is sold at about 3.25 pounds per kilogram. And uh, a pound is a British dollar in this context, not the unit of measurement co-opted by the fashion industry to create a warped idea of health and beauty. There are also apps that can help you take inventory of the food waste and ensure that excess food gets to people that need it. In the UK, apps like Food Cloud and Fair Share are used to connect grocery stores with charities to get the food to homeless people or to lower income families to ensure that the world is fed. In the States, Copia is doing something similar by connecting it with connecting you with a, a food seller or businesses that have excess food they send a driver to pick it up and get it to a place that needs it there is so much high quality surplus that's wasted that just needs to find the people that need it the most komal is the founder of copia a startup that's trying to recover all this perfectly good food if you imagine the world's largest football stadium filled to its absolute brim, that's how much food goes wasted every single day in America. And I'm not talking about last night's pad thai or this morning's half-eaten pastries, but untouched, uneaten, perfectly edible food. So we don't need to purchase or make more food. We just need to figure out how to get it to the people who need it. MIT. And with the way Copia works, the conservatives and pretend liberals that don't help homeless people can be on board with this too. It is job creation, and since America is all about having someone else do shit for you since personal responsibility and accountability is something that this country has forgotten about much like most of its history, this is exactly what we need to have a cultural shift on food waste. Someone has to pick up and drop off that food, load the trucks, work on the app, and so on. You have some food, you type your info into the Copia app. A driver will then come and pick up your food and deliver it to the shelters that need it. And during big events like Super Bowl 50, there's a ton of extra food. The issue is that it has a short shelf life. Imagine four 16-foot refrigerated trucks filled to their absolute brim. That's how much food we recovered. We fed 23,000 people in two days. Nobody slept. And it's not, you know, hot dogs and popcorn. It was lobster rolls and pulled pork sandwiches and $300 cheeses, high quality food. If we can get the food that would otherwise be wasted to people who need it, we're not only fighting hunger, but we are actually slowing global warming. And, and, and yes, you could say that Copia can hire the homeless, but let's make sure that they've got enough energy to do a job first rather than one that needs some training by feeding them. And I know that the way things are right now, uh, there's a, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that, that's against the idea of using technology for anything since we've gotten news about the Cambridge Analytica debacle. But this is proof that algorithms and data analytics can be used a right way. And fear not, I will be talking about the Cambridge Analytica issue and what that means soon. You can subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss out on it. See?
advertising for positive means. I, I'm, I'm like the wonky fruit of the comedy world. Another major issue that leads to food waste is the increase in size of refrigerators. Since the 70s, the size of refrigerators has increased by 15%. Refrigerators have grown about 15% since the 1970s. One of the things we found in our research is that people are uncomfortable with white space when it comes to food. So we love it in buildings or in design, but when it comes to food, we do not want to see empty space in our refrigerators, on our plates. And so I really believe that in some subliminal way, we're just filling everything. And if we had smaller refrigerators that let us see everything that was in there, that in itself would lead to quite a bit less waste in our homes. And it isn't just our... And this means more space to fill. And when it comes to food, Americans are very uncomfortable with white space. Discomfort with white space is the only time America has been uncomfortable with anything related to the color white. And if you're thinking, well, what about white supremacy, Krish? Huh? What about white supremacy? I think with the current state of things, there's an entire group of people that are very comfortable with that. With this, we load our fridges with as much food as we can get in there. And because of this, we waste the food we bought because they're lost in the abyss of excess we call the modern refrigerator. And even though we waste this food, we as consumers don't feel as bad about it when we throw all that food away because, hell, at least we, we paid for it. So we can do whatever the fuck we want with it. There's even been a little bit of research to show that once something goes in the refrigerator, it's actually worth less to us than before. Researchers asked people how they would feel if they got home from the grocery store and dropped a carton of eggs. And then they asked, well, if your eggs sat in your refrigerator for six weeks and then you didn't use them, how would you feel about that? And people felt a lot less remorse. I think a lot of the waste in our society does come down to choice and wanting to have the option to eat something at any time, whether or not we use it. This is the real hypocrisy of consumers' gluttony. The idea of consumerism wants us all to get more fill all the spaces, and make sure it's all for us. Our bodies tell us to stop, but our systems manipulate our brains to think that we need just one more bite. And when that food goes to waste, we feel just a little bit better that we didn't give in to the manipulation of one more bite. A real fuck you to not just consumerism, but also to your wallet and anyone that food could have fed. A fuck you with no winner except the negative manipulations of advertising. This obsession with size has led to us ignoring por the reality of portion sizes. Not only have refrigerators gotten larger since the 60s, but plates have increased in size by 36%. And it isn't just our refrigerators that have gotten bigger. The average dinner plate has grown by 36% since 1960. And when you have a big plate, you tend to put a lot of food on it, whether or not you can eat it all. And that makes sense. You know, when JFK died, Americans needed to fill that hole with something, so overeating is all we could do. Th that that and invade the moon over and over and over again, just like Kennedy wanted. Take that moon, huh? Not only will we take your rocks, but we will also use your image to sell oversized pies to Americans that have already had two desserts that day. We are constantly encouraged to overeat and create more waste. Fast food joints ask you to supersize your meal and... At the dinner table, we're encouraged to go get seconds. Buffets are basically the gluttony lunch special. Olive Garden has endless soup, salads, and breadsticks. It's, it's like the black hole of portion control. You've eaten so much food that it bends and warps your sense of time and reality. There is a place that is decreasing food waste based on portion control and is seeing results. 
The University of California, Santa Barbara, got rid of their trays so kids with no impulse control can get the right amount of food they want. This cut back on food waste by 50%. You have a tray that's 14 by 18 inches and you feel you need to load it up with food. You would see students that had four glasses, water, juice, soda, milk, and you would go to the tray return and they were still be full. In 2009, the dining hall stopped using trays. Students can take as much food as they want, but there isn't a tray to pile it onto. The food waste per person per tray reduced by 50%. I mean, so that was huge. Let's say. With better food portion control, that means that these kids get the right amount of energy to keep learning instead of getting too logy and falling asleep in class. I mean, no wonder history repeats itself. We, we overeat and then we fall asleep during our history lesson about how not to repeat our atrocities. The only concern I have with this tactic is if the abstinence only people get a hold of it and decide to decrease bed sizes by 50%. But unfortunately, unlike portion control, horny control never really works. And it's not like sex at colleges is limited to a bed. What they should do is increase the amount of free condoms at colleges by 69%. So a large question is how do companies like Copia, Food Cloud, and Fairshare get food to food banks if we've reduced the quantity of food available to the world? The point isn't to repeat the history of using these people as a scapegoat to create more consumers food waste across the world. The point is to make sure that we're making the right amount of food so each and every one of us has enough to eat. And we've talked about corporations exploiting generosity and championing it. But if we divert away from that, we can actually progress. These apps can be used to make a more efficient system. Using the data they have, they can determine exactly how much fruits and vegetables need to go to what store in what city to ensure that every citizen is fed. The future of these apps is not in food redistribution, but in the regular distribution itself. And these apps might be able to get rid of gluttony in our society. Shit, God couldn't even do that, which might prove that God still has a flip phone. You know, which, which might be an explanation as to why the Cambridge Analytica debacle didn't reveal their existence and might prove that there are humans richer than God and that our technology is uh, probably a little too expensive. Look, if God can't afford an iPhone X, we need to rethink the efficiency of our technology. Gluttony is a sin that psychologically plays on our status a status that is linked to filling more spaces and how the more food you can make means the higher up the totem pole you are. With the idea of excess-based status, decreasing the size of what we eat on can decrease the amount of food we waste and can make healthier citizens and eventually lead to a more fair and just world. That's been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and a share. Uh, share it with your friends or your enemies or anyone that you think would enjoy and benefit from a video like this. Uh, sharing is caring. It's the way that you can help independent media reach new audiences. Uh, Google and YouTube and Facebook are all censoring the reach of independent media like this. So it's up to you, the viewer and the fans of the show to help this show out by sharing it. That's one way to help the show. Uh, another great way to help the show is by donating to the Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. There you will find all the goals and the rewards that you get by, by being a patron. Um, I'm breaking up Forkful of Noodles, the full 30 minute episodes into three different parts. Um, but if you donate to the Patreon, you will get early access to the full 30-minute episode 
uh, before anybody else gets to see it by being a patron. Um, plus, you get uh, exclusive full stand-up comedy sets as well, so you get to see my stand-up comedy material uh, work in progress. Uh, the Patreon website, again, is patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. I have live stand-up comedy shows coming up to Muncie, Indiana, Dayton, Ohio, Indianapolis, Indiana, Edwardsville, Illinois, Detroit, Michigan, Blacksburg, Virginia, Johnstown, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, and a lot more. Uh, if you want to see my entire tour schedule, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. And while you're there, uh, you can check out all of my stand-up comedy albums uh, from my newest one I put out last year called Approaching Happiness uh, to the very oldest one I have, I think, from like 2011 called Homecoming. You can get the entire breadth on my Bandcamp page at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, if you subscribe to it, you get special um, monthly exclusive stand-up comedy material. This includes storytelling shows, uh, crowd work sets. Um, it includes fringe festival sets uh, that don't uh, that you know not everybody gets to see. So that's uh, that's one of the things that are kind of behind a paywall. So that's ramen noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com. R A M A N noodles comedy dot bandcamp dot com uh, and Another way to financially help this show, help DIY stand-up comedy, is by donating to the Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, really helps this show because uh, I am the only employee that is uh, on the staff of this show. So that means that uh, I'm doing all the research, the writing, the rewriting, the editing, the filming, the video editing, and the uploading. So it's like an entire staff's worth of job done by one person. Uh, so if you want to help uh, my endeavors uh, out uh, for this show, my podcast, Taboo Table Talk, and DIY uh, comedy touring and help me get to your city more often, you can donate at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, if you can't donate, um, sharing is a great way uh, to help this show and help reach new people. Uh, but, you know, if you'd like to donate, if you can donate, have the ability to, you can donate a little, you can donate a lot. It all starts at $2 a month and you get some really cool stuff um, every single week at the Patreon. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, I very, very much appreciate every single person that watches, likes, and shares this content. Keep doing that. That's the, a way that we, we build this community up. There are more episodes coming every single week. So stay tuned, and we'll see you on the road.